WordPress and Squarespace are both tools for building websites, but it's hard to overstate just how different they are. At a high level, Squarespace is a complete package. It includes everything you need right out of the box. Hosting, themes, plugins, and more. Everything just works, and you don't have to think about technical details. WordPress is not a complete package, or at least it doesn't start that way. For example, hosting is not included with WordPress. Instead, you have to install it on a web host. This can be intimidating, but it means that WordPress can be installed on many different web hosts, unlike Squarespace, which can only be hosted on Squarespace servers. WordPress is an open source CMS, which means anyone can add to the community. And so there are thousands of themes and plugins provided by third party developers. This wide selection makes WordPress much more customizable than Squarespace, but it also means WordPress often has a steeper learning curve. So at a high level, Squarespace is intuitive and user friendly, but less flexible. WordPress has a steeper learning curve, but it's more flexible. Now this really just scratches the surface. In the rest of this video, I'm gonna get specific about how these differences manifest themselves in all sorts of other ways. My videos are supported by affiliate commissions, so if you'd like to try Squarespace or my recommended WordPress host, Kinsta, you can find a link to them both in the video description and I may earn a commission. One important difference between WordPress and Squarespace is the page editor. Squarespace uses a visual page editor, which lets you drag and drop content blocks up and down the page and into columns. It's simple and intuitive. WordPress recently switched to a new page editor called Gutenberg. Gutenberg allows you to drag and drop elements up and down the page. However, unlike Squarespace, Gutenberg is abstracted away from your website. So it doesn't show you how the page looks within the context of your website. This means you'll often find yourself flipping from Gutenberg to the website preview in order to accurately see how things are looking. Overall, Squarespace's editor is more intuitive and easier to use. The interface feels polished and thoughtful. A good example of this is photo cropping. You see, in order to display a photo gallery as a perfect grid, most photos need to be cropped. Squarespace has this simple built-in system for adjusting crop. It's really handy. WordPress, on the other hand, is often more overwhelming. The editor can feel cluttered and occasionally chaotic, but this isn't because WordPress doesn't care about ease of use. Instead, it's actually more fundamental. WordPress is just designed to be more flexible, so the interface needs to be more abstract. WordPress is open source, which means anyone can contribute to it. This is both a strength and a weakness. The strength is that there is a huge amount of themes and plugins. There is 11,000 themes on ThemeForest and 50,000 plugins on WordPress.org. The weakness is that many themes and plugins don't work perfectly out of the box. Incompatibilities often arise and getting the fix can require you to tweak code. All you have to do is browse plugin reviews to find users running into these kind of problems. But if you can live with the occasional incompatibility error, you'll love that you can find a WordPress plugin for just about anything. Some plugins are even quite sophisticated. For example, WooCommerce is an e-commerce plugin that's totally fully featured. Squarespace is not open source. Developers can't simply choose to create a plugin for Squarespace. Instead, Squarespace curates a selection of 60 partners like Instagram, Acuity Scheduling, Apple News, Zapier, and more. Squarespace will never match the amount of plugins and themes available on WordPress, but the upside is that everything on Squarespace just works. You don't have to troubleshoot incompatibilities or worry that your theme doesn't support a plugin. If Squarespace supports an integration, you can be confident that it was integrated thoroughly. Here's a good rule of thumb. Use Squarespace if you're building a conventional website and use WordPress if you need an unconventional feature for your website. So this begs the question, what is conventional and what is unconventional? Photography portfolios, blogs, and small business websites, these are all examples of conventional websites. They need features like photo galleries, forms, and maps, all of which Squarespace does an excellent job of supporting. A feature is unconventional if it's not something you imagine a typical small business website would need. For example, WordPress has BuddyPress, a plugin that adds a social network to your website. That's an example of an unconventional feature. 
It's actually difficult to fully demonstrate just how many unconventional WordPress plugins there are, but to give you a sense, here are a few of the more unusual plugins. Content Randomizer. It lets you create random content blocks. For example, if you wanted your sidebar to randomly cycle through a collection of quotes and jokes. Redirection is a 301 redirect manager. Visual Link Preview creates Facebook-like previews of links. Table Press lets you create tables in a spreadsheet-style interface. Those are really unusual plugins, but I can guarantee you some website out there will still need them. But if you don't need an unconventional feature, I'd recommend Squarespace. Let me give you a concrete example why. Let's say you want to add a photo gallery to your WordPress website. Photo galleries are a conventional feature. Most websites will need them. Unfortunately, searching photo gallery plugins on WordPress will swamp you with hundreds of results. Figuring out which one is right for you can take hours. One plugin might be incompatible with your theme, while another plugin will be compatible, but it won't have the exact features you need. On the other hand, Squarespace has one very excellent photo gallery content block. It's reliable, easy to use, and it looks great with all Squarespace themes. It just works. There are roughly 70 Squarespace themes and over 11,000 WordPress themes, but just like with features, WordPress wins in sheer selection, while Squarespace is best if you just want a beautiful theme that works out of the box. Themes have always been a strength for Squarespace. In fact, I think they have the best themes of any website builder. They all have a definite look and feel. They're clean and sophisticated with bold typography and plenty of space for photography. By contrast, WordPress has 11,000 themes available and some are great while others are more outdated. You'll also occasionally run into WordPress theme compatibility issues, which are usually fixed by tweaking CSS code. WordPress themes can be totally customized so long as you're willing to code or hire a developer. Otherwise, Squarespace actually has better theme customization with their style editor. Squarespace's style editor is both powerful and intuitive, and I really mean that. It's excellent. It lets you customize hundreds of style options, and it's easy to do. You just drill down to specific style options by clicking the elements in the website preview. The WordPress style editor is called Customizer, and it mostly feels like a watered down version of Squarespace's style editor. I found it to be inconsistent from theme to theme. And some themes come with no meaningful style options at all. I also find the language to be often abstract and a little confusing. You're going to have to pay for both Squarespace and WordPress, but you will pay in different ways. Squarespace offers four all-inclusive plans, which range from $12 to $40 per month. The more expensive plans are for e-commerce. WordPress is free to use, but you have to host it somewhere. And a decent entry-level host, such as SiteGround, will cost around the same as a Squarespace website plan. Just a note, SiteGround's price is just an introductory price. The real price is $11.95 per month. There are free WordPress themes available, but often the best themes are for sale. You can expect to pay between $39 to $120 for a premium WordPress theme. But you only pay that once and you get the rights to that theme for life. There are also many free WordPress plugins, but the best plugins, again, are often for sale. For example, WP Forms costs $40 per year. In the end, it's almost hard to say whether WordPress or Squarespace is more expensive. It really comes down to the individual configuration of a website. A uh, quick note about the differences in customer support. Squarespace provides 24-7 email support and a live chat service during Eastern Standard Time working hours. Because WordPress is an open source platform, it doesn't come with any customer support though many paid themes and plugins include some customer support from the creator. Also, some specialized web hosts will help you install and set up a WordPress website. Both WordPress and Squarespace have strengths and weaknesses. Squarespace is a complete package that is intuitive and thoughtful. Everything just works. But Squarespace will never be able to match the amount of features and flexibility that WordPress offers. For that reason, I recommend Squarespace for conventional websites and WordPress for websites that need unconventional features. My videos are supported by affiliate commissions, so if you'd like to try Squarespace or Kinsta, my recommended WordPress host, you can find a link to them both in the video description, and I may earn a commission. Best of luck building your website.